Coming up, we hear from the United States Secretary of Education as he makes a stop in eastern Kentucky. Plus, two Illinois paramedics responding to a call for help are now charged with first-degree murder. Plus, looking much drier as we finish out the work week. The very latest on the potential for, those, for that much cooler weather coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. The U.S. Department of Education is awarding more than $35 million for grants to support cradle to career solutions in high need communities. And a portion of that money is headed to Eastern Kentucky through Partners for Rural Impact. Today, U.S. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona visited two schools in Hazard that are supported by Partners for Rural Impact, spending time in classrooms and speaking to parents about their students' education. What is working? And what do we need to do better? And I'm not just talking about the school. I'm going to get into the school in a minute. But this is your opportunity to tell me in public education what's working. And if you wanted me to go back to D.C. with something, what would it be? That conversation with Secretary Cardona was at Roy G. Everstow Elementary School with a parent panel. And we'll have more about Cardona's day in hazard tonight at 6. As many of us look for new ways to cope with a bumpy economy, schools nationwide are racking up debt with their lunch programs. Nationwide, student lunch debt tops $19 million. The median district reportedly has more than $5,000 in lunch debt. The federal waivers providing free school lunches nationwide during the pandemic expired in September. A new study shows school meal programs have been and remain at risk with rising costs and supply chain issues. Our supply chains in many areas have been disrupted. These schools really do have to plan their meals in advance. As part of a bipartisan bill last summer, Congress raised the reimbursement rate by 40 cents for lunch, but the program is set to expire in June. Recent efforts for a more permanent solution appear to be stalled in Congress, and the latest proposal does not go back to paying for all student meals. An ongoing effort in Prestonsburg is seeing progress as more businesses become sensory and autism friendly. The idea to boost autism awareness and sensory concerns to the public began as a passion project from Courtney Kreider and her husband Chris, who have three children, two of whom have autism. Chris's barbershop was the first autism friendly business in the city, a trend that has expanded to City Hall, Megan Goble Photography, and Hyden pediatric dentistry where Kreider works. Whether it be events or whether it be the sensory friendly businesses, the city of Prestonsburg has absolutely latched on to this idea and said, hey, we want this for our families in this town. Kreider says the support has helped to build the Eastern Kentucky ASD and SPD support group. A Kentucky lawmaker has officially left office. Ralph Alvarado is now health commissioner of Tennessee. He announced plans to resign back in November. Alvarado was sworn into his new position a few days ago. A special election is set to fill his seat on May 16th, the same day as the primary. The district includes Bath, Clark, Menifee, and Montgomery counties, as well as part of Lexington. Well, some areas are seeing clouds return this afternoon as we watch the potential for a couple of showers in a very small part of the area. Otherwise, it's still quite mild. Here's a look right now from the Mountain Parkway. It's Slade 62 is the current reading there, so it is very warm for this time of year, and you see plenty of uh, cloud cover working back into the region. Not the case in Pikeville. Pikeville Medical Center shows a completely cloud-free sky right now in the Big Sandy. Mid-60s still out in that direction, and most of us are still there. Low to middle 60s out there everywhere but wise at this hour. We'll continue to see winds gusting at times up to 40 miles per hour, especially in our western counties where that wind advisory remains in effect through 7 o'clock tonight. You see a few of those showers trying to move in to areas along and north of the Mountain Parkway. It's something we'll watch. I don't think it'll be a huge deal, but that's as that front is coming through. Temperatures really take a tumble behind that front as we continue to watch much cooler air, much more seasonable air continue to work back into the mountains. How much seasonal? Well, tonight we're talking 
mid 30s back again as we head into tonight. Partly cloudy skies with just a hint of a flurry in some spots. Details on when things finally look to get back to normal in a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. The family of an Illinois man who died after being treated by paramedics is demanding accountability. The paramedics involved are facing criminal charges and a wrongful death lawsuit. Now, note some of the video you're about to see may be disturbing. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has the story from New York. Two Springfield, Illinois paramedics charged with first-degree murder made their first court appearance one after the other via video link Thursday morning. We will schedule this for a preliminary hearing tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. The charges against Peggy Finley and Peter Cadigan stem from a call to help Earl Moore Jr. Sit up. Sit up. Now. Police officers called for an ambulance on December 18th after they were told the 35-year-old was hallucinating due to alcohol withdrawal. Earl, sit up. When Moore didn't respond, paramedic Peggy Finley is seen yelling at him and at one point tried to drag him across the floor. You're going to have to walk because we ain't carrying you. When Moore finally got outside, officers helped Cadigan put him on a stretcher. Cadigan appears to shove Moore back down on his stomach. Moore died less than an hour later after arriving at the hospital. An autopsy says the cause was asphyxia due to prone face-down restraint. Justice for Earl. Justice for Earl. Justice for Earl. Justice. At a briefing announcing the filing of a wrongful death lawsuit against the paramedics and the company they worked for, Moore's mother demanded justice. I want y'all to know I really, really miss my son. They treated my son like he was an animal. He was human. Finley's lawyer told CBS News the murder charges are an overreaching stretch, saying prosecutors are turning what at most might be negligence into a murder. Cadigan's attorney similarly says this was a tort, not a criminal case, and that his client is devastated and called the case highly unusual. If convicted, Finley and Cadigan could face 20 to 60 years in prison. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Lifestar Ambulances service denies or declined a request rather from CBS News for comment. The United States has officially reached its debt ceiling. The debt ceiling set by Congress has a borrowing limit of $31.4 trillion. The federal government reached that mark this morning. Now the Treasury Department is set to begin uh, taking what's called extraordinary measures to avoid a default and to ensure the federal government can continue financing its obligations for several more months. Congress has the ability to raise the debt limit and has modified it numerous times in the past, but it's something some hard right Republicans have said they refuse to do this time. Lawmakers have a few months to negotiate until the government defaults, something that has never happened. If that does happen, it could be catastrophic to the national economy. We'll have more on this coming up at 5.30. But next here on First at Four, one fast food chain is bringing back a popular item on the menu for a limited time. Those are pretty good. I've got cooler air moving in along with a few more clouds this afternoon. The details coming up.